And now... Hey, ladies and gentlemen... Please fasten your seatbelts. Welcome to PreneurCast. Yeah, business cards being swapped, beers being drunk. Can I say a nasty word? Can I say procrastination? With Pete Williams and Tom Gosher. How well did that go down? Talk about that entire thing in a very another rant and soapbox episode if you want to. Visit us online at PreneurMarketing.com. I'm on the little love heart kind of looking thing on the um, penis looking device. <laughs> I'm keeping that. That's going to be the start of the show, doesn't it? <laughs> yep. That's awesome. And the really worrying thing is, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that's the uh, Yeti microphone if we do decide to keep this in for people playing along at home. The felt looking device that is the Yeti from Blue, which is an awesome, awesome uh, USB microphone that does look like a penis. Yeah. And, and the pretty heart shape is a cardioid microphone pattern, which is correct for what you need it for. Okay. <laughs> You've lost it, haven't you? Almost, okay. almost. So there was, there was we... a brief. Sorry, go, go ahead. No, I was just going. There was a brief blip there where I really did have to think carefully about what you were talking about. <laughs> so and then we... I was quite disappointed when I knew what it was. Oh, sorry, dude. Sorry. <laughs> uh, we'll talk about my tattoo later. Uh, so, uh, what are we talking about today, fine sir? Well, um, I thought that you could tell me a little bit because I know you're going away soon mm. and you have more than a few businesses and, and business concerns running around. I just have the one, uh, the, the, the video production, media production company that I run. Um, but I've just been away to the UK for five days and I, I, did that big thing that all the all the big internet marketers did last year, and they all said, oh, "I'm leaving my laptop behind. I'm running my business from my iPad." So I thought, <laughs> right, okay, I'll give that a go. Yep. And it it went okay. Good. But obviously, what I do is is I've got big dependency on on heavyweight gear to do the actual video production because I'm still heavily involved in it. So I'm interested from your point of view. I you know I know that you. you uh, obviously, you've just been talking about this uh, on a few emails and blog posts that you've done. You do a lot of the source material for the video production. Obviously, mm -hmm. I pick up the back end. Um, but I'm more interested in general about how you're going to handle the fact that you're going away and you're supposed to be properly on holiday, aren't you? You're not supposed to be kind of checking in every five minutes from your iPhone. Uh, it depends. Okay, let's... The conventional word of a holiday is, yeah, I wouldn't be doing that sort of stuff. But uh, my beautiful fiance, fiance Fleur, whose 30th birthday it is that we're celebrating in Bali, uh, knows what I'm like. Um, she knew exactly what she got into when she started dating me. So um, I'll be taking my laptop with me and I will be probably doing work poolside for maybe an hour and a half or so a day. Um, okay. I think that's – knowing me, that's what I'll probably be doing because that's just who I am. I just find – like. I don't find work work as such. There's, there's certainly tasks that I won't be doing while I'm away, which I consider the crappy side of having to run a business and do work. But the stuff that I do enjoy um, consuming information and communicating, I'll, I'll still definitely be doing that. And, and I think I haven't made my mind up. Um, we just recently moved all our email, which I think we talked about in the last show, to Gmail. So yeah, yeah. I am... Um, from a, from a consumption and a communication perspective, I'll be able to operate completely on the iPad or the iPhone, uh, which, would be, which would be great. Um, there'll just be certain things that I uh, wouldn't be able to do that I would normally do if I had my laptop with me. So I'm in two minds whether I take my laptop or not. Um, and every sort of half hour when I think about it, I kind of keep swapping back and forth uh, because – I don't think I really need my laptop with me for, for what I'm going to need to do while I'm away. Um, although if I'm still going to be working on the book and writing, which is what I really want to try and do every day, it's been about an hour by the pool uh, writing. So hopefully, the, you know, the, the the sea salt air will help me uh, um, come up with some creative words. Uh, I'd rather do that on my laptop than the iPad. As much as you can type on an iPad, I just would find that a little bit annoying. Uh, however, it might be a good excuse to go and drop 100 bucks on a wireless keyboard. Um, so I haven't really had an excuse to do that before. And as much as I like cool, fancy tech, I, I've, I've taught myself recently, probably over the last couple of years, actually, to be honest, not to buy stuff for the sake of buying stuff. So um, 
I need an excuse to buy a wireless keyboard, and I think this could be a good excuse if I decide just to do that. I can I can type and write on um, a simple note on the iPad with a with a keyboard. And I can still do all that sort of stuff. So that that might be uh, a way to get around not going away without my, my laptop to do that sort of stuff. So that's sort of I guess the, the my gut feel right now. But if we keep talking and by the end of the podcast, I'm probably back on to taking my laptop with me. So um, I have to report or, or do a show from from overseas. <laughs> I would be interested from a from a tech point of view. Obviously, you know I'm I'm as big a geek as you are, if not more. Um, and I'd, so, from a tech point of view, I would be interested. I have to say, I didn't even think twice. I bought the keyboard when I bought my iPad. See, I, um, I, it took me about nine months to get my iPad after they were they were released. Yeah, um, I, I just couldn't see it fitting into my workflow the way my workflow was at the time. I thought it'd be a really cool device to consume stuff on. Because it's amazing for that to watch video mm. and check your Google Reader, all that sort of consumption stuff. It's amazing for that, and that's all I saw it for when I first when it first hit the market. And I thought I don't need another consumption device; it's just more noise. So I thought I, I won't I won't get it until I can see how it's going to benefit my workflow and make me more efficient. Then I'll get it. Any of the cool consumption stuff that comes along is a is the icing on top, so to speak. So after uh, Ed Dale and um, Rob Somerville, um, two of our very close mutual friends, um, had been playing with theirs for about six or nine months, I uh, went over to Rob's house for dinner one night over pizzas and red wine and basically said, I bought an iPad today. What do I do? And for about three hours, he just said, okay, this is what you do. This is the apps to run. This is how you do it here. This is how it works in with this workflow. This app does this. This is how you can do it. And just basically uh, leached off his um, trials and tribulations and learnings. And, and that is the way to do it. And, and those guys really are the masters of, of beating a device <laughs> until it, it does, you know, it, if it's ever going to work in a workflow. Oh, yeah, they do. And they're great for it. I, and that, I did exactly what you did. I did exactly what you did. I sat there. I looked. I looked at this iPad and and all the boo-ha-ha And you know, Ed gets on a plane t- from Australia just to go and buy one in America and all that. You know, Paul Colligan meeting him in the street and blah yeah. blah blah. blah. That's and I watched it. I thought, oh, that's en- that's entertaining and and it's nice for you that you can do that. And I watched it. I watched. I watched it all calm down. And then I watched these guys fit it into their workflow and show me why I needed one. Yep. Uh, and how it would fit in because it, I'm, I'm exact was exactly the same as you. It's like what a cool device. I don't need one. Yeah. Uh, and I sat and I looked, and the moment that I realised that it was going to benefit the workflow, it was going to it was going to enhance and add value. I went and got one, yeah. and I did see a little bit further forward than the consumption device. So I got the keyboard, mm-hmm. and I tell you, it makes such a difference. Yeah. See, I, I don't, I don't a write a lot on it, and that's probably because I don't have a keyboard and I just find it really annoying. So the only sort of stuff I do from a, a writing perspective, so to speak, at any length on the iPad is just working with OmniFocus, really, and the occasional note-taking on a um, simple note. But I don't really sit there and write for hours and hours and hours, whereas if I had a keyboard, I probably would. Uh, so it might be a good excuse to get one for the plane and, and for Bali and leave my laptop at home and see how I go. Flair will probably freak well, out, yeah. but we'll, uh, we'll give it a shot. <laughs> that's the thing that... The, the, I, I, I've had to train myself in the past few years. I used to fly with everything. I used to take everything just in case. And, and when I say everything, I mean, you know, I had ridiculous amounts of gear. The video gear alone used to exceed the carry-on weight <laughs> on most domestic flights. Um, and my, my, you know, my, my other half, Kiwi, her, she, she's a photographer. Uh, that's her big hobby uh, and, and kind of semi-professional thing. And uh, her camera gear used to exceed basic carry-on weight. So we would check bags just to go to the UK. It was ridiculous. <laughs> um, and, and in the end, I, and, and very few people believe me, but my primary camera is a Kodak ZI8. Mm-hmm. Yeah, How do you find you know, the audio like on a, that? I've heard rumors that it's a very tinny audio. Don't, don't start with the audio on the ZI8 just because you guys have gone and got your creative Vados. Is it, or, um, is it actually, no, is, what's better? I, it comes down to this for me. It, it's a hundred dollar camera. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like bitching that your, your domestic internal flight doesn't have free drinks when it costs you $40. You know, <laughs> it's like you're in a chair in the sky for $40. Let yeah. it go. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. I mean, I, the uh, both Rob Somerville and again another mutual friend Eugene Ware both said uh, both said to me you know there's noise introduced on the signal path 
um, when you plug an external microphone into the ZI8. We're getting really geeky here, but you and I, we both know if you can't plug an external microphone in, it's not worth buying the camera. Agreed. Um, okay. So if something's actually then degrading that quality, the quality of that audio, mm, maybe it's not that great. Personally, you know, I've, I had my ZI8 before anybody else had their creative Vardos. Um, and I'm pretty critical. Yes, there's noise in, in the path. In, in the audio signal, there's noise. And let me tell you that everybody else who now owns the ZA8 is going to go and listen for that noise because they didn't notice it beforehand. Yep. Um, you really wouldn't notice it under normal conditions. It's a run-and-gun camera. Okay. You know? it's, uh, yes, okay, you, <laughs> you get two of them and set them up on a tripod, and I defy most people with decent lighting to tell me that you didn't use a $700 camera to shoot that footage. As I say, it's my primary camera, you know, but it's a $100 camera. Uh, I haven't personally come across a piece of Vardo footage yet that has better audio than my ZI8. Now, I don't have a Vardo, and I'm not going to go buy one just to prove something <laughs> wrong. Yep. You know? But, for, but again, for most I'm, people... And, like, unless you're shooting a Hollywood film, the audio would be fine, wouldn't it? It would, and, and I'll just reflect that somebody's already shot a decent decent length film on, a, on an iPhone. So, you know, yeah. <laughs> it's all about horses for courses. It's all about what you've as As Ed says, as um, was it Chase Garvis, it's all about the best camera is the one you've got with you. Yeah. And the ZI8 to me has meant that I can carry literally about five kilos less gear. That's awesome everywhere i go um i'd happily by the way i'd happily scrap it for an iphone 4 because the quality of the video is equivalent the only issue with the iphone 4 is plugging an external microphone in as you and i have discussed before however bring me to a good point which i was trying to find and for the life of me i can't find it one of my yeah. uh consulting or coaching clients actually yeah. found a company in the states that mm -hmm. i think it was less than 10 bucks yeah had a cable you could buy that actually plugs that was, in that was me no, that was you, me. It wasn't. It was someone else. But okay, yeah, you. Okay, I have. I have already sent you that. I'll. I'll. Uh, I'll have put you? a link. All right. Yep, I've already because we we talked about it, and then I went and found you a cable. Did you? Okay. Yeah. And I completely, obviously, ignored your email. That's quite all right. Sorry about that one. So um, that is what I'm here for. What What is the go with that? Give me the rundown. Is it, um, does it work? And it works. So you basically plug it in, and then you plug in your normal lapel mic with 3.5 mil jack into that adapter cable. Is that basically what That's happens? It. Yep. It's that simple. Um, basically, I don't know really why it doesn't work in the first place, but the 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 because it's a three pole jack on the iPhones. It's got microphone. It's got a microphone and a headphone built in to that yep. jack. Strange. Um, and you can't just plug a regular microphone in. I think it just shorts out too many connections, or it's the wrong configuration, or whatever. Uh, and I found a supplier, and they do two actually. They do a microphone, uh, a direct domestic microphone socket. Uh, adapter and they also do a microphone and headphone ah. but i don't know if that's i don't know if that lets you monitor the audio that you're recording so it's actually got two jet two it's actually got two ports on it it basically splits yeah. it ah very cool yeah so. well i might actually go and buy one now i'll look out for the email and i'll actually go and buy one <laughs> awesome <laughs> now we we've gone we went way way off track of what i was actually interested in um because there's there's two things really that that I'm interested in from your business from, from the business point of view here. One of them is the difference between you and I. The major difference is is that your product, your content, um, is predominantly text based or mind maps or things like that mm -hmm. with with the odd bit of audio. And you really really can get away with an iPad for pretty much every piece of content you want to create, and maybe you know an extra bit of an iPhone here and there to record some some run and gun video yeah so i guess if um, i wanted to create some content exactly i hadn't really thought about that while i'm away i could mind map it on the ipad and just chuck the laptop sorry the um, iphone next to me in a, in a yeah. relatively quiet room and it'd be more than adequate for some some quick video yeah mm. exactly uh an audio the audio on the ipad you could just do an audio recording with a headset into the ipad and that would be fine ah through the camera well. connector kit through uh, well just just a regular te you know your, your iphone headset works on the ipad Ah, and that'd be fine audio. Okay, cool. And that would be fine audio. Mm. Or, yes, you could put the camera connection kit in, that really funky bit of a hack that allows you to plug a, some USB microphones into the iPad. Yep. Um, which I've done and works wonderfully. Uh, you actually use a, a Plantronics headset into the iPad. Do so you happen to buy that from uh, simplyheadsets.com.au? 
Do you know what? I did not happen <laughs> to buy that from simplyheadsets.com.au. Terrible but plug. If I'd, if I'd have known that, that a well-known internet marketer and very good friend of mine ran a company that was the major distributor of Plantronics high-quality audio headsets in Australia, I would be sure to recommend it because, in fact, Plantronics headsets, as far as I'm concerned, are the bits. Yes, but this, have, this podcast brought to you by. Them. Sorry? This podcast episode brought to you by. <laughs> yes, in fact, it could be our first sponsor. Um, Pete, 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 Pete takes his hand out of one pocket and puts it in there. That's it, man. So, no, yeah, so I um, yeah, have a Plantronics uh, sitting right next to me here as well. What is it? I don't even know what model it is. What is this model? I have no <laughs> idea. Um, you, oh, or, or have you gone the way of Ed and gone with the, for the Bluetooth headset? Because that would also work with the... I yeah, see, nah, don't like them. No. I don't know. For whatever reason, I much prefer being connected. I've, I've never had great luck with the Bluetooth headsets um, myself personally. I think I've only ever tested one. So, um, I yeah, I've had this headset like a blue. Uh, it's, it's a Plantronics USB one, um, and it's work works perfectly fine for what I need to do. So I've got no issue with like the whole standing up and walking around and feeling like you're actually. Uh, you know, moving your hands and on stage and stuff doesn't really bother me. I'm happy to sit and uh, just refer to notes that way when I talk. So, yeah, iPad with a wireless keyboard and um, that USB he- headset could uh, be the perfect uh, toolkit. There you go. I mean, this is this is a conversation I have with a lot of people, usually on the inverse, because they, they say, oh, can the iPad do this? Can the iPad do this? Is it, it's a, you know, can I do this, this and this? And it's like, no, it's not, a, it's not actually a computer. <laughs> not a traditional in the traditional sense, you know. Yes, it's got some grunt, and yes, you can do these things, but it's not built for it. No. But as as in in the space that we operate in, it it truly is an awesome device because I, you know, with a little bit of thought, I've just basically collapsed your tech into a very small bag. Yeah, a very um, very cool. Yeah. The only thing um, I couldn't really do is is, is video capture stuff. So because I was actually, funnily enough, just doing a, a list today for a, a a little article or blog post. It was something I thought could be kind of cool and funky, and a um, which I might write up for the blog at, at some point. Is like a I, I've got the, the the working title is how I manage my crazy busy, busy life. The twenty seven applications and services I'd be lost, no, royally screwed without, and just started writing down and categorizing everything I use on a daily basis, all the tools and apps and stuff. And mm-hmm. just looking at this list right now, there's not a lot I couldn't do um, on the iPad uh, or the iPhone because it's either going to be web-based or it's um, app-based and it just syncs between all my um, my Macs. There's only a few things like the, the screen flow recording type stuff is about the only thing that I couldn't really do. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah, and... and, and you don't actually do that much of the screen flow, screen recording stuff anyway. No, that's what um, you're for. So it's not really, yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's what um, you're really, really good at. Is probably a better way of putting sorry? it. Rather than saying that's what you're there for, it's for what you're really, really good at. So I'd rather leverage why, your skill. Why, thank you, sir. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, just... um, I, I think, yeah, I think that would be an awesome article or series of articles because I think, you know, 27 things that you do and how you use them is quite a lot of information. Well, let me run through it for people who've got a pen handy. Zero and Shoebox for my finances. iCal OmniFocus and Launch Bar to manage my time and attention. Communication tools are Skype, Skype Call Recorder, Gmail with Mailplane, Twitter, QuickTime Pro, Dictimus, Say It, Mail It. When it comes to uh, writing notes and documents, Notational Velocity Alt with Simple Note, MindNode, Scrivener, Text Expander, Drag and Dictate, Screen Steps, Screen Flow, Sketch, and Video Cue. Uh, from a consumption perspective, Instapaper, isize.com, MySpeed, and Google Reader. And then other random stuff I use that can't be categorized in the above categories include Garage Sale, Market Samurai, VMware Fusion, Transmit, Strong VPN, and Moxie. Or Mosey. What's that? Back up. Mosey. That's it. There you go. That's the uh, the list in 25 seconds. Cool. I can't actually type that fast, so you can send me that for the show notes. Um, did you have Dropbox in there? Uh, uh, yeah, you just didn't hear me say it. No. Um, okay. No, I didn't. Why didn't I have it in there? That is... Mm. That's that's infrastructure level, that is. Maybe it's just so ingrained in me that I forgot about it. I thought it was just a standard feature of every computer. Um, yeah, yeah, Dropbox. Mm. Cool. There you go. So, 
Well, so, so obviously we're, I'm uh, taking this off track again as I always do. Yeah, no, that's okay. That's what I'm here for. Bring you back. Uh, I'll, I'll, I'll in fact come right back to the book soon as well. Ha ha ha. Um, which is part of my job. But back to the going on holiday. The the other side of what a lot of people in certainly in the internet marketing space, but a lot of just a, a lot of entrepreneurs who um, are work for themselves, work work on their own. One of the biggest problems they have is keeping everything going while they're away. Mm -hmm. Now, part of the things that you've talked about, part of the things I think that you you do talk about in your, your various presentations that I've seen you do live, um, it is just your overall business infrastructure that allows you to basically run your business from your iPhone. You know, let, let's face it, most of the things you were talking about when we talked about, we, we digressed about the iPad and about content creation and this and that. That's all really the internet marketing stuff that you do because you're interested in it. That's not really your businesses. No. Your your businesses are kind of over on the side. And, and uh, I, I, I'd almost say from what from what I've seen, they, they kind of run themselves. Uh, yeah, look, I lovingly call them the uh, the babysitting businesses because um, they're the ones full of staff that seem to take up a lot of my time. So, uh, look, I guess there's a, there's a couple of things that make up those businesses. Uh, two awesome business partners, which means I can go away and the babysitting still gets taken care of. No baby's going to scold themselves in the or drown themselves in the bath. Um, I'm using some really bad analogies, aren't I? Uh, but like the staff are going to still have some management there, so that's that's comforting to know, which is, which is good. So the, the the beautiful thing of that of that partnership side of side of stuff in certain um, instances is that you can have someone else you can rely on when you when you need to take time off or, or vice versa, which is really handy. So a lot of the the management of, of, of staff, which tends to take up a, a big chunk of a, a, a owner or an entrepreneur's time if they have staff is still managed by them which is great um, in terms of the projects that I'm working on uh, it's actually worked out really well one of the things I've been spending time in the business doing uh, should actually be finished in about a week and a half or hopefully actually probably about a, uh, half a week really so it's actually going to be good timing for the trip in that I've sort of set myself a deadline to finish a project before I go so I would have otherwise somewhat been in limbo which is kind of handy um, so that's really good. But for, from, a, I guess, a, a high level, just owning a business position is, yeah, absolutely. The, the business has have been structured f uh, to minimize my time and the other guy's time as much as possible. You know, obviously, primarily one of the, the biggest things that we have is a series of uh, online websites that sell um, various products and services through uh, e-commerce shopping carts. So fundamentally, that can can be pretty streamlined without us being there. You know, that they sail to get made day in, day out without us having to do a whole lot. And we've got staff who um, support those businesses through phone calls because one thing that I find a lot of people doing when they've got an e-commerce site uh, is just leaving a lot of money on the table by not having a phone number on their site. We... Uh, I won't go into specifics. Um, I'm actually about to record a video, which will probably go into specifics about uh, our business and, and what we do and all that sort of stuff. And we can talk about that maybe next episode. But um, a significantly higher uh, conversion rate by simply having someone on the phone answering calls for people who don't want to buy online. And even in this day and age, there's still plenty of people who, who don't want to buy online. They want to feel that there's someone there they can talk to. They might have some questions before they purchase, or they just might not trust online shopping yet. And there's definitely people out there. So, um, even if we got rid of that that roles in that position, we'd still be making money in the business. But this is just a great way to, to to boost it up. So, to answer your question, I guess to be more specific, is that yeah, absolutely, those businesses run without me being there. They're, they're mature businesses; they've been around for five or six years. The ones that are a bit more hands on, like the phone system business. So, there's the sales guys and the service manager and all that sort of stuff happens without me really doing a whole lot, which is really, really good. So my, I guess, day-to-day uh, -day role uh, as an owner of those businesses is pretty much just communicating. Uh, it's not actually on the tools, banging the nails or or got my hand up a, a cow's backside as being a vet or something like that. It's just communicating with the staff and, and, and stakeholders, um, suppliers and things like that. And most of that can be done over the phone or via email. So I can do that. Um, when I'm not in the office, whether I'm at, at home working from the home office or, or in Bali, you know, sitting by the pool bar with a with a pina colada in my hand. So uh, I think that just comes from two main things, I guess, to sum it all up, is that structuring the business from day one 
to, to really give you the outcome and the lifestyle you want, which is why we're sort of going towards this e-commerce side of things stronger and stronger and stronger. Uh, and also um, just the maturity of the business, which is really handy. So there is that time. Unfortunately, it's not all roses that, you know, there was time, you know, when you, you are down and dirty working in the business, you know, as much as you need to. But as long as you've got that outcome and that goal in mind, that's what you're working towards is to be working on rather than in, you should be fine. Cool. I mean, uh, is it, is, <laughs> you, you basically quoted the e-myth. I did, there. didn't I? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and, and that was, I think, really what, without any prompting, um, what I was hoping you were going to say, because I, <laughs> having looked at this from the outside um, and having recently, to my embarrassment, recently read the e-myth. Yeah. Um, you know, it, you say that your business is mature, but there are a lot of businesses out there that have been around a long time that still aren't running efficiently because they weren't ever they didn't ever the owners never set out with that vision and as you've just said there you know you set out with a vision you want you've got whether it's what the lifestyle you want or whether it's just as simple as i don't want to be working in the business all the time i want the business I want to be working on the business and, and have other people working in the business. Yeah, I, you know, I think it, the distinction is are you self-employed or are you a business owner? Yeah, Two exactly. Two very, very different things that so many people don't really make that conscious shift in. Um, and look, yeah. even like a more recent book um, than the E-Myth that sort of touches on this, which is really, really good, is um, John Warillo's Built to Sell. Um, now, I actually had a conversation with John uh, only a week or so ago, um, and we actually recorded part of that conversation, so that'll be on the blog shortly as well, which would be really cool. Um, and that whole book is just about how to actually build a business that's sellable or saleable, depending on, on how you pronounce it. Uh, but underlying that whole thing, which is what we spoke about um, primarily, is that the principles that make a business um, attractive to an acquirer are the same things that make a business attractive to an entrepreneur who wants a lifestyle. So you shouldn't be using these and applying these methods if you want to sell a business. You should be applying it if you just want to have a lifestyle and have an, an income stream without you. So, Absolutely. and I mean, that was the thing that I took away from the e-myth was, was um, that, that whole thing that it, it doesn't matter whether, as you say, you want to sell the thing, whether you genuinely, I mean, he uses the idea, the, the concept of a, um, a franchise, which is a really good way mm. of imagining what you need to do. Absolutely. You know, the, the systematizing and everything like that. Um, but he says it doesn't matter whether you want to keep the business, whether you do want to sell it, whether you want to franchise it, as you say, those things work the same whether it gives you the lifestyle or it gives you a business to sell or it gives you something you can put in a box and franchise the the method is the same uh, and there is real there is real real method in that madness and one of the things that being away on probably my first vacation of the year and possibly my only one uh, <laughs> i'm still working in my business i'm still the you know one of the primary operators of what i do and that's something that that if I want to have the lifestyle, if I want to have more free time, et cetera, et cetera, then that's something I've got to get away from. Um, and, and having been a really a kind of a self-employed single person working in the business for so long now, that's quite a big shift. But, you know, I've got, I've now got a lot of people around me that I can model and that I can get advice from and get some mentoring from that, that can help me with that. So it, it's, it's quite a positive thing for me. So um, is this podcast also a bit of therapy? You're sort of sitting on the couch while we're talking. Is that, is that what I'm hearing? <laughs> might be. It's all good. It is for me cool. too, don't so, worry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, so in the last few minutes of the call, uh, I'd better check on how you're getting on with the book. We ha we have our cover almost done. That's very exciting. Um, that that seems like procrastination to me. Yeah, yeah. yeah it does. I guess you could define it as that. However, that's what's yeah. apparently the most important thing to the publisher right now. So, um, you know, I'm just doing what the man says. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, realistically, um, look, we actually do uh, down to two cover designs, uh, which is good. So we've got to try and finalise those in the next 36 hours. Um, we're sort of, yeah, but which is which I'm, I'm really, really happy with one, uh, which is hopefully the way we're going to go. The other one, will, I would be uh, 
happy with, but I think the other one's got a bit more pizzazz, which is pretty cool. Um, from a writing perspective, um, yeah, made, made some progress. Definitely uh, not as much as uh, I anticipated, promised, slash declared in previous episodes, um, but there is definitely progress, which is good. So it's a, it's a continual battle, um, which I'm getting towards. So, yeah. How's that for an answer? Go, go, yeah, go, go get that iPad keyboard. Yes. Um, I, I just need to remind you of something. Having you, you being pretty well ingrained in the internet marketing space, that real physical books aren't like internet marketing information products. When somebody buys it, you do actually need to have finished it at that point. You can't kind of sell them the cover and then deliver the content in bits. Mm. It doesn't work like that. No. <laughs> Are you, are, you, are you having a go at me or are you making a statement? I'm not quite sure. Is that, is that, is that meant to be a lesson for the listeners or a go at me or a bit of both? I, I'm, not, I, I'm not having a go at you. I'm just kind of encouraging you to maybe complete the book. No, I think – do you know what? <laughs> funnily enough, though, this is probably um, worth, worth discussing actually is I think one of the biggest problems we've had is we've had a – which I think I may have mentioned, a very – a great publisher who's been, I'll say, very lenient with us in terms of saying, you know, we know the book's going to be great. We know it's going to sell really well. So whenever you get it to us, we're happy to, to work with you on it. Uh, and I think that's been part of the downfall is I think, you know, solid deadlines make shit happen. Um, so with anything, I think, you know, when you have a set, a set deadline, I think it works just human nature that you work better towards it. And because we haven't had a, a physical deadline um, it, it'll stake in the ground, it's been a bit hard to go, oh, look, I can do that tomorrow because I've got something else that does have a deadline in there. Um, so things with deadlines obviously uh, prioritised uh, and these things that don't have deadlines always push back. So I think having a deadline will help. And the reason the book cover is actually not a great procrastination thing or not, not truly a procrastination tool or, or, or thing in the true sense of the word is because the reason I want the book cover is so they can actually start sending it out to um, bookstores and get it listed on Amazon for pre-orders and all that sort of stuff. Of at, and as soon as, as soon as it's at that stage and we're we starting from the book cover and it's actually going out and the world's starting to be told about the book, they're going to be told about a release date. And then mm-hmm. once, once that release date's put in, in place, we have to work backwards to when the book has to be finished. So yeah, that's a... as much as I'm saying that, yeah, it has distracted me a little bit, it's actually, I think, a good distraction to have and why I have been willing to sort of put off some of the writing and to fine-tune the book cover is because I know that by agreeing to that, it's going to set a stake in the ground that will make me more accountable at the, at the other end. So um, that, that's a good thing about getting the book cover in places that will be available yeah. And, yeah. and marketed and the world will know about it in more of an official capacity. So, in fact, you've actually created more accountability. So, so it's well a good done. thing. Yeah, it's a good thing. Good save. Good save. <laughs> Okay, well, we're about at time. So, uh, excellent call. Beautiful. Um, excellent, excellent chat. Really some good topics. Not uh, uh, Still not totally on, on track, but uh, covered some interesting stuff. Um, definitely for, from you know my therapy point of view, <laughs> <laughs> I think we've covered some good ground today. Beautiful. <laughs> no, I think, I think it was good. And I think definitely, I think it's all about, you know, putting stakes in the ground of deadlines, um, and, and putting stakes in the ground towards your own um, outcomes too, whether it's to ship a book or whether it's just to ship a business that works without you. And I think, you know, those sort of stakes can be defined as, hey, by November this year, I want to have every Friday off. And that means you have to put, start putting systems in place around your business so you, you're not in the office or you're doing your work or you're working in the business on Fridays or whatever it might be, however you want to actually, you know, plan those goals. I think it's important to start working uh, on the business and, and really – even take a step backwards in, in some of your income and things like that. And, and it might be hard for a couple of months if you sort of start doing less in the business stuff, which will result in less income, but for a quicker exit at the other end where in six months' time, then you, you will be having the income you're on without having to actually work. So I think that's that short-term pain for long-term gain, typical um, saying that everyone says, but I think it's, it, it, it's, it's, a, it's true and I've been through it, so... I think, you know, if you haven't started planning from day one like that, you have to actually um, really take a little bit of a hit right now to, to get there. You've gone silent on me, dude. That's because you didn't finish the sentence. Why? What did I say? That's how I finish sentences. I just stopped talking. No, no. 
Ed does that. You don't do that. Oh. Oops. Great tip there, Pete. Excellent. Thanks a lot. That's, <laughs> yeah, no, that's a really good thing to end on. Um, but no, really, on seriously, good summary. Good summary of the thing. And, and yes, and I, I, I hereby place my accountability marker on the table in an episode. Um, because, yeah, I need to set a goal that I need, let's say, you know, Friday's off by November. Um, and I need to set that goal and I need to do the things that are going to get me towards it because it's okay saying, hey, you know, I'd like to have some more time off, some really vague, not well-defined goal that I can avoid accountability for. But really, you do need to put a stick, just put a stake in the ground and say, that's what I'm going for. And every day, look at it and say, am I any nearer? And if not, why not? Absolutely. Nice work. Cool. See you next time. Very cool, mate. See you next time. Boy. Boy. You've been enjoying another fine episode of PrinterCast with Pete Williams and Dom Gocher. Make sure to hang out with the boys online at www.printermarketing.com or drop them a line via printercast at printergroup.com.